Amen. Now let's go to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation chapter 12. We're going to read from verse number 7. Revelation chapter 12. We're going to read from verse number 7. To verse number 12. Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 12. It's a prophetic passage. I know I haven't gone that far in teaching the book of Revelation. I think next time we're meeting, I'll be picking up from there. But um, there's something important that I want to share from there today as we continue with our program. I want us to read together one, two, three, go. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, he was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the seal. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Okay. Someone said, Amen. Amen. Now, the first thing that, of course, strikes a student of the Bible is the fact that the Bible talks about a war. There was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. And the obvious question is, when shall this war be? Or when did this war take place? Because there are other scriptures in the Bible that show that there was a war in heaven at some point in time. So an ardent student of the Bible will have a question to say, okay, is this a future war? Is this a war that already took place in the past? When is this war going to take place? And okay, looking at the content of the scripture, when? Because we're looking at um, the 70 week prophecy of Daniel. The 70 week prophecy of Daniel, which is a very important prophecy. That in that prophecy, you know, we try to put things in a particular timeline so that we can establish when things happen or when what happens. And once we understand the 70 week prophecy of Daniel, then it becomes much easier to put things in a timeline. Someone say timeline. Timeline. Say one more time, timeline. Timeline. Very, very important to understand when shall what happen. You know, and this prophecy in the book of Revelation, as you can see, it's coming in Revelation chapter number 12, after we've talked about the fact that there are three sections to the book of Revelation. The first section, according to Revelation chapter number 1, verse number 19, was the things that John had seen. And John was told to write the things that he saw. And the things that he saw were actually the 70 week, uh, he actually saw Jesus Christ, amen, being presented in his eternal glory. We see Jesus Christ being presented in his eternal glory. And John saw that and was told to write. And then the second thing he was told to write was actually uh, what was in his day, which was the seven churches. And those seven churches were prophetic churches because 
overall they represent the church history and i said prophecy is history in advance prophecy is what history in advance so in other words prophecy is when someone is taken into the future and then gives you a history talks about the history before the history takes place we call that prophecy and when prophecy has been fulfilled we say oh my god prophecy has come to pass but that's when we are certain the accuracy of the history that was given to us you know in advance so when a prophecy has been fulfilled history has been made are we together so far oh, yes. all right so john wrote what was in his day which was the seven churches which were seven prophetic churches which stood for all the churches and all the ages and all the eras of the church era and as you know the church um, was something that was the mystery it was mysterious in the old testament even the prophets as sharp as they were the sharpest prophets isaiah he put a comma and kept on prophesying he didn't see that that comma was actually more than two thousand years the sharpest prophet talk about daniel the sharpest prophet he just went Pew! are you hearing what i'm saying that's what we call prophetic perspective now prophetic perspective you see events line up you don't see the gaps in the events you can talk about one two three things and then people say oh these things will happen will happen will happen they think it will happen bang 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 sometimes there are gaps in the actual fulfillment of those events and in fact in your bible there are about 24 gaps <laughs> so the one you see in the prophets of isaiah as captured by Luke chapter 4, is just one of those 24 gaps. Between Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, there's a huge gap. But that's for another day. Oh, yes. That's for another day. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, yes. All right. So, the church era, or the church history, it was given to us in advance and you can see the pattern of how the churches have behaved over the years to fulfill the prophecy you see the authenticity of the bible the accuracy of the bible is not in the recorded miracles the accuracy of the bible is giving history in advance Amen. you are not hearing me. oh yes the accuracy of the bible is giving you what history in advance how can someone talk about events that shall happen um say three thousand years ahead of time two thousand years ahead of time eight hundred years ahead of time it proves that the author of the bible is outside the time dimension so that is the signature of god that's the signature of the creator on the fact that he authored the bible someone say yes yes are we together so far? And then the third part of the book is where uh, John is taught to write things that shall be here after. And the key word in the here after there was metatauta, according to Revelation chapter 4, verse number 1. It begins with that word metatauta. After this, I looked and behold. So we know that from Revelation chapter 4 going forward, it's uh, things that will happen after the church age and we have also looked at the fact that um, we believe rapture will take place in revelation chapter 4 verse number one as we shift to the after this the after church age events now i said that uh, there's a lot of debate among the scholars as to when rapture take place is it before the tribulation in the middle of the tribulation is it after the tribulation you know there are all these debates going on and i said don't argue with people ask them one question what evidence do you have for your position let them articulate why they think the events will happen at the time they said they'll happen if the answer is okay good and why do we believe that will happen at a particular time we also have to articulate you know why we believe but we don't have to enter into arguments why because we shall see all of us <laughs> oh yes i receive i don't know whether you're hearing me we shall all what see 
So one shall tell the other, I told you. Oh, yes. On that day. So there's no need to fight because even if we fight and chop each other's heads, we will not change anything. <laughs> Amen. Let's just wait and see how things will be unfolding. Why? Because it's a history in advance. So let's wait for the history to pan out, play out, and be fulfilled. Amen. And then we shall say, yep, I told you so. So, as you can see in the section of this prophecy that I'm looking at today, in the book of Revelation chapter 12, war in heaven is not just something that happened at one point and then the devil was banished and then the devil does not have access to God. No, the devil has got access to God. Are you hearing me? The devil has got what? Access to God. Even now as I'm speaking, has got access to God. He has got access to the presence of God. He goes in the presence of Jehovah God. In fact, he spends time a lot, a lot of time in the presence of Jehovah God. I don't know whether you are hearing me. We are following. So yes, there was war in heaven. It's not just something that shall happen in the future. It also happened in the past when the devil rebelled, when he transformed himself from being Lucifer to become who? Satan or devil. This was a cherub. This was an angel created by God. According to Isaiah chapter number 14. My God, can I go deep, one level deeper? Go deeper, Papa. Isaiah chapter number 14, verse 12 to 14. Isaiah chapter 14, verses 12 to 14. You need to understand that that God never created Satan or devil. Ah, my God. I'm messing up your theology right now. Oh, diva, Baba. Satan or the devil was never created by God. Now ask me the next question. So where did he come from? Oh, yes. <laughs> I know that's the next question. Where did he come from? No, let's, let's just see who did God create. And then we can answer the other one. Are we together so far? Oh, yes. Let's read the scriptures. Isaiah chapter number 14, verse 12 to 14. The Bible says, How art thou fallen from? From where? Heaven. Oh, who? Lucifer. Who is Lucifer? Son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Can you see? Who are we introduced to? Lucifer. Someone say Lucifer. Lucifer. You see, Lucifer means brightness. Lucifer means the morning star. Lucifer means someone who is clear, as in you can see through. I don't know whether you're hearing me. So the idea of Lucifer is light, brightness, shining, morning star. That, that, that is the one that was created by God. God created Lucifer. And Lucifer created a devil. I'm, I'm okay, okay. I'm just using local language for you to understand. He made himself become a devil. God created who? Lucifer, morning star, shining, light. But because of iniquity, because sin was found in him, rebellion, he wanted to go and become the highest guy. So that angels must begin to worship him. Nations must begin to worship him. Nations must rebel against Jehovah God. Now, because that was found in him, he corrupted himself. Now, when he corrupted himself, he reduced himself from the dimension of Lucifer, light, to a dimension of darkness. He became the devil. So, the devil became into being by the power of reduction. <laughs> I don't know whether you're hearing me. Oh, we are following. But the one that God created is who? Lucifer. You see, sin reduces. 
Sin never increases you up. Amen. It reduces you. Even in the days of grace. Because today people say, ah, no, we're under grace. We can do whatever we want. Yes, go ahead and do whatever you want. But mind you, sin what? Reduces you down. Ah, now that's a very deep. I'll leave that alone. Go deeper, Papa. Sin kills prayer. Prayer kills sin. Amen. So sin is a prayer killer. And prayer is a sin killer. Oh, yes. So when people begin to mess around, you know what's eaten in you? Your prayer life is eaten up. You can never stand before God with a confidence. Aha, uh -huh, now you've just played in the camp of the devil. Why? Because remember what we're reading now in the book of Revelation. This guy, he's the accuser of the brethren. He accuses them day and night. It eats your conscience. You cannot stand before God with a clear conscience. It takes a lot of effort. That's why people keep repenting the sin they committed long, 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 long time. They keep repenting. Why? Because each time they say, Hallelujah, Jehovah, I worship you. You are holy. They go, mm, 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 mm. Have you forgotten? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord. <laughs> I just reminded you. Uh, I don't know whether you are hearing me. Oh, we are here, Papa. So, what I'm trying to say here is that this Lucifer, it's not something that shall happen in the future. It happened already. That he reduced himself to become a devil. He reduced himself to become Satan. Are we together there? Alright. So, the battles in heaven is not something that's just historical. It shall happen again in the future. Remember the events which are coming up. For example, during the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, the 1,000 year reign of Christ, the devil shall be held by an angel and put into the bottomless pit and the angel shall lock the pit so the guy shall be locked up there. Are we together so far? Aha, uh -huh. that's an event which is coming in the future. But here we are being told of another event where this guy, the devil, shall try to go again to heaven for the final show. Try to dethrone God. Try to remove God from his, his position on the throne. What he doesn't know is nobody can vote God into power. And nobody can vote him out. Amen. <laughs> Oh my God. We can vote Danny Andrews out. Oh, we yes. can vote Gladys Bella Jacqueline out. Oh yes. And replace her. But our Jehovah God can never be removed from his throne. Amen. He is the ultimate ruler. He is the creator. He is the God who reigneth from heaven above from everlasting to everlasting. Someone said, my father is on the throne. My father is on the throne. And he's there forever. And he is there forever. How comforting is that? Our daddy, he's the king of kings. Oh, yes. Our daddy, he's the lord of lords. Oh, yes. Our daddy can never be dethroned. Are you hearing me? And I love what the Bible says, because this war broke out in heaven, and then immediately the Bible tells you the involved characters in this battle. And who? And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels. So the dragon and Michael are the leaders of their angels. And this dragon is the devil, of course. He is not fighting against Jesus. He is not fighting against God. Amen. It's Michael, not God. So never assume that there's ever a day when the devil shall ever fight against God. Oh, yes. He is too small. Oh, you are not even hearing me. The devil, Satan, Lucifer is 
too small to fight against God. Because God is the creator. Most of us, we use this language loosely. Oh, no, the devil is fighting against God. There's never a day the devil can ever mount any resistance against Jehovah God. Are you hearing me, somebody? We need to begin to put things in their proper context so that we can have proper ideas and our faith can stand on solid ground that your Jehovah God is a creator. Jesus Christ is a creator. The devil can never fight against Jesus. The devil can never fight against God. He can only fight against Michael. Say yes! Yes. He can only fight against Michael and not God. Oh boy. I wish you could understand. And he comes and says, hey, look here. I am fighting against your God. I'm fighting against your Jesus. No! Tell him, shut up, shut up, shut, 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 shut up right now. Oh, yes. Your level is the level of who? Michael. Tell him, don't talk about my God. Talk about Michael. Amen. Oh, yes. Say, don't talk about my God. Don't talk about my God. Talk about Michael. Talk about Michael. <laughs> oh, Someone say, yes. 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 And unfortunately, too bad for him. Verse 8, he prevailed not. Neither was there place found anymore in heaven. So in other words, the devil, as I'm speaking now, has got a place in heaven. He has got access in heaven. He has got a place that he goes to in heaven before the father to accuse the brethren. Are you hearing me? Oh, yes. He goes there to what? Accuse the brethren. Very important for you to understand this. Do not assume that he does not have access. He does have plenty of access. Oh, yes. Not even just access, a place. Someone say a place. A place. A spot. You know, you know a spot? It's like, it's like when you're coming, you know, to park in the car park, they say reserved. Amen. And then you've been driving around looking for a spot. You come there. Oh, come on. And then if you, are, if you are born in Africa, you still park where it says reserve, reserved. Amen. <laughs> if you come from Malawi, <laughs> you still park there. And then you, you put your keys in your pocket. You come back, you find a fine. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh my God. So this guy has got a place, has got a spot. And he goes to that spot and he uses that spot very, 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 very much. Verse number nine. And the great dragon was cast out and uh, that, that old serpent called the devil. So number one, we are told the guy is a dragon. Are you hearing me? And then the guy is what? That old Serpent. In other words, they are now tying. Remember, I said in the, whatsoever started anywhere in the Bible has got its finishing where? In the book of Revelation. So, in the book of Genesis, we are introduced to a guy there who comes like a, like a serpent, talking to Eve, tempting humanity, getting humanity into sin. So, here the Bible is tying all those things. Now, you see, oh my God, are you even hearing me? Oh, yes. The Bible is tying everything together. And the great dragon was cast out. And that what? Old serpent. Now the Bible knows that along the way, we picked up another name, devil. And then along the way, we picked up another name, Satan. Uh, how many names have they given you there? Three. I think Brisbane got it right. Sydney is guessing. I can tell Sydney is guessing. Hey, Brisbane, how many are they? Four. They are four. Excellent. Let's clap hands for Brisbane. I knew Brisbane would get it right. Yeah. Sydney, mm, they are suspects. They are guessing. <laughs> They are starting with a two, and then a three, and then four, and then six. You know, who knows what number they'll finish with. <laughs> Say neighbor. Neighbor. Hey. Hey. Now listen. Listen. Now they are telling you that all these names, whatever you call him, in my mother tongue, 
I don't know. Diabolos. Mdierekezi. I don't know in your mother tongue. What do you call him? Eh? Angilosi. Power. I do in your mother tongue. What do you call him? Ah, no, you are suspect. You, in your mother tongue, what do you call him? Satana. Ah, no, suspect, too. <laughs> you, you take English and make it sound like... Uh, <laughs> no. Your mother tongue must have a good description. Mdiereke is someone who, it's like you have, you've cooked a nice dish. And then you invite a visitor. Okay? And then the visitor eats more than you. <laughs> we call that one Mdiereke. That's a Satan. <laughs> that is a behavior. <laughs> I don't know whether you're hearing me. So the Bible is tying together whatever title we call him. Whether we call him a devil, whether we call him a great dragon, whether we call him a red dragon, whether we call him Satan, whether we call him an old serpent, whatever name we have given him, the Bible says, and the great dragon was cast out. In other words, ah, don't think that there's a difference between a dragon and the devil. No, it's actually the old serpent. Don't think there's a difference between Satan and the devil. Ah, it's the same person who has been held and cast out out of heaven are you hearing me so they are tying together everything for you to come to a point of knowing that the guy called Satan, the guy known the, as the devil the guy called the old serpent the guy called a dragon we're talking about the same guy has been cast out of heaven beyond this there existeth no more devil no more Satan. are you hearing me oh boy can i go one level deeper no deeper papa you see the word it uh, do I even need to go there? I receive. My God. I receive. The word devil in Greek is diabolos. D I A. D I A. B O L O S. Diabolos. I don't know whether you're hearing me. We are following. Now, if you follow language, you discover that dia, it means in between. So dia meta, dia gono. What does it mean? In between. So if it's diameter, you've got a circle, and then you draw it, a line separating the two halves. What do you call that? Dia meta. Or if you've got um, a, a rectangle, a square, and then you draw a line from that corner to the corner here, what do you call that? Diagonal. Oh, yes. This is what we call onomotopoetism of language. Power. I think I should become a high school teacher in Australia. Oh, yes. <laughs> Onomotopoetism. So what it means is the devil, when you say devil, you have lost a proper understanding of his character. This is a description of his character. His character is to separate. Ah. So in his capacity as devil, diabolos, is to what? Separate, divide. Die, die. English has picked up just the die, which is D-I. Are you together so far? D-I, die. But now our problem with English is it changes and it loses the meaning. How does it change? We know that when you, there's one vision, then when there's one vision, everyone is lying, is lying, is lying behind the one vision. There's unity. Uh huh. Yes. But the moment you've got two visions, what do you end up with? Die visions. Now, what do you call it in English? Division. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> no, it's two visions. Die visions. The moment you have got two visions, what do you end up with? Separation. 
Ah, I don't know if they're hearing me. Okay. So in a marriage, if there's one vision, that marriage will stay together. But in a family, if there are two visions, then there will be divisions, which will lead to divorce. Amen. Oh, yes. Can't you get it? That if you end up with a division, then the two visions will force you out. Uh, oh, yes. And you call that a divorce. No, it's a dive. Because two visions will force you out. So it's a dive. Oh, yes. Someone say, I disconnect. I disconnect. So, when we call devil or diabolos, is someone who comes between you and God to separate you. Comes between you and your hubby to what? Separate you. Comes between you and your friend to what? So, wherever you see division, I, I want you now to have speech understanding. Who is the enemy? The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against what? Principalities. Against what? Powers. Against what? The rulers of the darkness of this world. Against what? Spiritual wickedness in high places. Who is the power behind them? Is called what? Devil. Dire bolos. Are we together so far? So when you go to prayer, tell your friend, yes, I know that probably there could be two visions here. But do you know who planted two, who planted two visions? His name is called the devil. So in the realm of the spirit, can I go one level deeper? Oh, deeper, Baba. In the realm of the spirit, the way you handle things is by handling them according to their character. Oh, deeper. Can I go one level deeper? <laughs> you handle things according to their what? Character. And that's how exactly God operates in the realm of the spirit. He reveals himself to humanity according to his what? Character. Mm, mm, you are not following me. It's okay to call him God. It's okay because he's God. But I want you now to begin to go to the levels of maturity. Where you begin to know God according to his character. Because that's how he reveals himself to humanity. When people are looking for healing, he does not reveal himself as a provider. He reveals himself as Jehovah Rapha, a God who heals. That's his character. Am I talking to someone right here? Oh, when yes. people are looking for provision, he does not reveal himself as a mighty warrior. Uh -uh. He reveals himself as a God who provides Jehovah Jireh. Someone say yes! Yes. Masaka Tashata Mandere are you hearing me? Oh, yes. When you are facing warfare, don't just say, oh God, I'm praying. Oh God, ah, ah. you need to look at the character of God. He's a mighty man of warfare. He's a mighty man of war. Am I talking to somebody right here? Hey, his name is Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah our banner. Say, who are you enemy? His name is Jehovah Nisi. I'm going to tear you down. I'm going to break you down. I'm going to break your son up. Say yes. Yes. Streams International Prophetic Church. Transforming lives by the power of prophetic revelation. Your lives will never be the same again. Please remain connected at www.streams.org.au. And you can also reach us by calling 1300 361 971. Until next time, Shalom.